Jacob Harris, a retired mechanic with a lifetime of stories etched in the lines of his face, had seen his fair share of struggles. His once thick hair was now silver, a testament to the years he had lived, each year leaving its mark on him in some form or another. It was early morning, the kind of morning that wrapped around you like a blanket, calm and quiet. Jacob stepped out onto the porch of his modest home, savoring the quiet of the early hours. The sun had just risen, casting a soft glow over the quiet suburban street, and everything seemed perfect? But then, his world was shattered. As he walked toward the driveway, he stopped short, his breath catching in his chest. His beloved 1955 Chevy Bel Air, a car he had spent countless hours restoring, was gone. The spot where it had always sat was empty. Jacob's heart skipped a beat, and for a moment, he thought his mind was playing tricks on him. But no. His car was truly gone. He rushed forward, his old legs working faster than they had in years. His hands gripped the edge of the driveway, his knuckles white as the reality sank in. It wasn't a prank or a mistake, it was stolen. His blood, sweat, and tears, invested in that car, had vanished into the ether. A sense of panic gripped him, and he muttered under his breath, Not my Chevy. His fists clenched, anger and disbelief mixing with a raw, deep pain. Grandpa, what's wrong? The voice of his 15-year-old granddaughter Emma, snapped him from his thoughts. She stood in the doorway, looking at him with concern. Jacob turned to her, his expression one of disbelief, but she quickly noticed the absence of the car. Wasn't your car right here? she asked, her brow furrowed. Jacob swallowed hard, trying to calm his racing heart. It was, he replied, voice tight. Someone took it. Emma's eyes widened in shock, but her gaze quickly shifted to determination. The spark of resolve in her eyes mirrored his own. Then we'll get it back, she declared. Jacob blinked in surprise. Lily, this isn't a game, he said firmly, trying to protect her from the dangers of what lay ahead. These people are dangerous. So are we, Lily shot back, surprising him with her fierce resolve. I know more about tech than anyone. You know more about cars than anyone. If we work together, they won't stand a chance. For a moment, Jacob just stood there, staring at his granddaughter. Despite the generational gap between them, they were united in their purpose. Slowly, he nodded. All right, kiddo, he said softly. Let's bring my Chevy back home. Jacob sat at the kitchen table later that day, still shaken by the events of the morning. Every glance out the window, every time his eyes fell on the empty driveway, felt like a punch to his gut. This car wasn't just a machine to him, it was a symbol of his life's work. And now, it was gone. Grandpa, I found something. Lily's excited voice broke through his thoughts. She had her laptop open on the table and was grinning at him like she had just found gold. Jacob walked over, intrigued. Lily turned the screen to face him, showing a series of grainy security camera images. I hacked into some of the local businesses' CCTV feeds, she explained, a hint of pride in her voice. This is the footage from last night, around the time the car was taken. Jacob squinted at the screen. The images were blurry, but he could make out a dark shape moving in front of his car. That's her, he whispered, leaning closer to the screen. But what's that in front? A van? Lily nodded. I think so, the back of it was open, it looks like they loaded your car onto it. Jacob's pulse quickened. Can you track it? Can you tell where it went? Lily chewed her lip thoughtfully, tapping the keys. It headed toward the old industrial district, she said, a little uncertain. That's all I could get. I'm not sure where exactly, but it's a start. Jacob frowned. The industrial district was a rundown area filled with abandoned warehouses and shady businesses. Not the kind of place he wanted his granddaughter snooping around, but she had already done more than the police would ever do. Jacob ran a hand through his hair. Let me handle it Lily, he said, but she shook her head, determined. No way. This is my investigation too. If I hadn't hacked those cameras, we'd be stuck waiting for the cops to do something. She was right. The police would file a report, send an officer, and that would be the end of it. Lily had already done more in a few hours than they would in weeks. Jacob sighed, his protective instincts at war with his granddaughter's fierce determination. Finally, he relented. All right, kid, he said softly. But we do it my way. No risky stunts. You stay close to me, and if things look dangerous, we're out. Got it? Lily's face lit up. Got it, Grandpa. That afternoon, Jacob and Lily set out in Jacob's old, reliable truck, rattling along the back roads toward the industrial district. The truck wasn't a sleek machine like his Chevy, but it was sturdy. They needed to keep a low profile. 
Jacob's mind raced. This wasn't a simple car theft. Whoever had taken the Chevy had specific plans for it. They parked a block away from the warehouse Lily had pinpointed on the security footage. Together, they approached cautiously, sticking to the shadows. The building loomed ahead, a decrepit structure surrounded by high fences and broken windows. This place was deserted in appearance, but Jacob had learned over the years not to trust appearances. This is the place, Lily whispered, her voice barely audible. Jacob eyed the area warily. Looks abandoned, he muttered. It's not, Lily countered. The utilities are still running. Somebody's using it, and they don't want anyone to know. Jacob couldn't help but nod in approval. Smart, he said. Let's see what we can find. The warehouse was dark and silent, save for the hum of old machinery in the background. Jacob's breath caught when they saw it. His Chevy, tucked away in a corner, looking undisturbed. His heart leapt at the sight, but the relief was short-lived. A group of men was gathered around another car, arguing in hushed voices. Jacob tensed, pulling Lily back into the shadows. They listened closely. We can't keep storing them here, one of the men said. It's too risky. The cops are already sniffing around. Relax, another man replied. This place is a fortress, nobody's finding us unless we want them to. Jacob's fists clenched. He could feel his anger bubbling to the surface. Torch's car, one of the men said. Get rid of the evidence. Jacob took a deep breath, forcing himself to stay calm. This wasn't the time to rush in. They were outnumbered. He had to think. We'll come back tonight, Jacob whispered to Lily. Wait until they leave, and then we take the car back. We'll also get some evidence on these guys while we're at it. Lily's eyes gleamed. Like a real heist? Something like that, Jacob muttered, with a faint smile. But remember, this isn't a game. We do this carefully or not at all. That night Jacob and Lily waited for hours, watching the men leave one by one. Only one guard remained, lounging lazily near the entrance, cigarette in hand. Jacob checked the time, then looked at Lily. You ready for this? He whispered. Always, she said, a fire in her eyes. They moved swiftly and silently, creeping along the perimeter of the building toward a side door Lily had discovered. With surprising ease, she picked the lock, and they slipped inside. As they entered the dimly lit warehouse, Jacob's heart skipped a beat when he saw his car again. It was almost as if it had never been taken. But there were still men nearby. They weren't alone. Jacob motioned for Lily to stay put. He grabbed a pipe and hurled it across the room, making a loud clatter. The distraction worked, one of the men spun around, gun drawn, while the other stayed by the car. Jacob moved quickly, slipping up behind the man and subduing him with a swift, quiet action. Before he could even process what had happened, Lily was at his side, wrench in hand, knocking out the second guard with a quick strike to the back of his head. Go, Lily whispered urgently, her eyes wide with adrenaline. With the guards taken care of, they moved fast. Jacob hotwired his Chevy and roared the engine to life. But as the lights flickered on and alarms screamed, they knew they had to act fast. With a final, decisive move, Jacob smashed through the warehouse doors, the sound of splintering wood and metal filling the night air. They were free, for now. The next morning, Jacob sat in his Chevy, parked back in its rightful spot in the driveway. The car gleamed under the early morning sun. Lily sat beside him, her face flushed with excitement. We did it, Grandpa, she whispered. Jacob smiled at her, his heart swelling with pride. No, kiddo. You did it. I couldn't have done it without you. As they sat there, the sound of their shared laughter was the only noise that filled the air. For Jacob, the real victory wasn't just getting his car back, it was realizing the strength of family and the power of determination. Together, they had faced danger and come out on top. And as they walked back toward the house, Jacob looked at Lily with a quiet smile. We've got work to do, he said. Yeah, she said, her eyes bright with possibilities. Maybe a new project? Jacob chuckled. Maybe. And as they stepped inside, he knew that this was just the beginning of their journey. Thank you for joining us on Jacob and Lily's incredible adventure. Their story reminds us that no matter our age, we all have the strength to face challenges head on, especially when we do it together. Sometimes, the greatest victories aren't just about reclaiming what was lost, but about discovering what we can achieve when we work as a team. If you were inspired by this story, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Leave a comment below and tell us what you think Jacob and Lily should do next. Your support helps us create more inspiring content. Remember, no matter the obstacles you face, with determination, courage, and a little help from those you love, there's nothing you can't overcome.
Stay tuned for more amazing stories. And until next time, keep fighting for what matters.